there everyone, I am John Doe, coming to you right from Tokyo, Japan for another edition of the Ghost Lairs Report. Now as you all are aware, of course, we're in the holiday season here globally in the world and here in Tokyo, the spirit is no different. Although we do have an extreme absence of religion when it comes to the holiday season here in Japan and for someone like me that is a refreshing change so as you can see here behind me we have our little Christmas tree and we're currently enjoying some uh, really cheap Korean beer gets the job done a tall can for 100 yen can't complain too much about that and also we have some traditional snacks here, like that. And of course, you know, my favorite, which comes in a million different varieties. A little bit of holiday sinbae, this, right? And so if you excuse me, we have a little bit of drinking going on today. But I'm nowhere near drunk. It's the, just one, you know? And little trick if you didn't know this I'm gonna do something I normally don't do anymore when I make these videos which is smoke forgive me it's the holidays eh? so candles make a very good alternative to lighters so mm. uh, so why am I you know being a bit more relaxed than I usually am. Well, it's not just the holiday season. It's the point of this video, actually. Recently, it's come out that over 4,000 firms here in Japan, the exact number is 4,189, were found to be in violation of labor law. Big time. You don't hear much about that coming out too often here, here in Japan. So we have an article here that's highlighting this. And um, to quote some parts of this article here, uh, the, leading, uh, the lead here says that following an audit conducted uh, starting in September of this year, and it recently came out here in December, the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare announced um, recently that 4,189 businesses violated labor law, including forcing extended work hours on employees and failing to pay overtime wages. And it ordered them to redress the situation, which basically means uh, the Ministry of Labor has said, pay all these workers the overtime you owe them and Stop working them to death. We have a word for that here in Japan. It's called uh, koroshi. Which literally translates into death by work. You work yourself to death. That is still a problem in Japan even today. Now I myself am involved in the labor movement here in Japan. But nowhere near as long as some other people I know and organized labor. Now, before we go any further, I know the argument. Organized labor cannot really get the job done. A lot of people say that. You know, the pitfalls of organized labor. You know, they can only take it so far. But you have to understand that this is coming out because of not only organized labor, but labor itself understanding their class consciousness and speaking up and saying something within, unfortunately, a bourgeois system. But here in Japan, labor law is still currently rather strong. Very strong, in fact. If you take the time to actually read labor law in Japan, 
you'll be amazed by just how much power labor can have simply by using your legal rights here in Japan. And interestingly enough, which I'm sure that the fascist Shinzo Abe there hates, the right of labor to organize is codified in the Japanese constitution itself. Now, I've never seen a bourgeois government other than Japan so far, but I'm, you can correct me later, that, is, that has codified the right of labor to organize in their own constitution. But here in modern times, labor doesn't stand up the way it should. Now, in the past in Japan, labor was very powerful. It was up over, well over 80% participation in, in organized labor. Now it's much, much lower. But anyways, I digress. We'll look more at this, right? Now, this report comes out to find that firms represented 82% of the 5,111 companies that were selected for the oversight action. Now, the Ministry of Labor is saying the reason they did this was based on tips and employment data against so-called black companies here in Japan. Black companies is what we refer to as companies that are widely known for abusive employment practices, especially against um, two marginalized groups in particular here in Japan, the youth and foreign-born. Now, this is something that touches close to me. I am foreign-born here in Japan. I'm what is referred to colloquially as a... Um, Gaijin. Now, Gaijin translates into outsider. The more accurate term would be Gaihokujin, which means person of foreign origin or foreigner, as you might have it. Now, these two groups, the youth here in Japan and the foreign born, are extremely marginalized groups overall. And they're the ones that companies typically target and force into what we call irregular labor. Which you mean which means people they force people to sign zero hour contracts or non guaranteed contracts. Well they can work you any way they want, any time they want, and they can find very interesting um loopholes to convince you that you don't have certain rights because of the working conditions. That's not true. Often, you will not get your national pension, which companies are required to enroll you in, and you are required by law to participate in. And they will not, uh, uh, usually will avoid enrolling you into the top tier of the um, national health care system. That, you know, the pension and the health care have two levels. The top tier of both is where the company enrolls you in it. Uh, you pay a little more, on average, and the company pays a little more, but it's halfway with each per with each entity. And you, when you and when you retire, your pension is very, very much higher, as where you are on the second tier. The second tier means um, I, for example, would be paying everything out of my own pocket. I get no help from any company or anyone else. And when I retire, my pension is far more lower, and the uh, copay on my in, on my health care is much higher. A lot of companies get around this; they skirt this. This is this is what another point that they're not really mentioning here in this article, but that is a huge problem here in Japan. And the overwork, you know, that's notoriously known uh, in Japan that you know they work us to death here. And they try anything they can to get around the law. So I find this very interesting that um, the Ministry of Labor is finally doing this because it's way, way past time to do this. Right? Now, 
a, a quote from a um, investigator of this. He said, even though it is, it was not referring to the audit, not just targeting business abusing businesses abusing young people. Many young employers are found toiling under duress. Now that's very true. Again, they're not mentioning the foreign-born aspect of this, but that's very true. And if you are a marginal, one of the marginalized groups here in Japan, you'll find yourself very often working under duress, under high amount of stress and intimidation. I felt that personally myself here in Japan. I was working, I formerly worked for a very large company, and they would take advantage of me every single chance they got and they put me in situations where I felt beyond intimidated beyond taken advantage of and I was stressed beyond anything you could imagine it almost broke my spirit as a human being yeah. now this article also gets into something about um, how this actually works, how labor actually fights, right? Now, as I said earlier, it's true from all these tips that labor is coming out and organized labor is standing up, all these cases are building. They did this audit and found this to go be going on. There's going to be a second part of this. Now, the Ministry of Labor has said to these companies, comply, correct this problem, be better. If not, we take this information and we send it to prosecutors and you'll be charged under the labor standards law which will get you in a whole mess of trouble. That's very important. That's very key because if the labor board, labor standards board fails to do it, the only other people you can fall back on to take action, legal action against the companies would be, of course, organized labor. But these are too many cases for um, the ministry here to ignore. All right. But this brings up one final issue I want to touch on because we're starting to get a little bit long in this video here. Is that um, the reason they're doing this? The reason is coming down a pipeline, there's going to be some labor law reform. Some very unpleasant labor law reform that the fascists, you know, in power right now want to push through. They want to make it easier for companies to hire and maintain irregular workers on these zero-hour zero hour contracts and non-guaranteed contracts. Make it easier to fire people. Make it easier to transform what's already been happening for quite some time now, but they want to make it codified to... Uh, have a constantly mobile, moving, shifting around labor force to take away the guarantees and the um, security that were already has been marginalized a lot here in Japan. You know, we really don't have that security anymore. It's a very minority number of workers that have that now. Most of us are fighting and scrapping just to make it, make any money at all and have any type of security. So that's the point why they're doing this. They're going to point all this out. You know, come down hard in these companies. And these companies in turn are going to go right to the bourgeois political, political apparatus and push for a change. Do you see that reaction? How that is connected? I'm telling you right now, this is going to go down. So you know, I want to go ahead and finish this up. This is all we're going to say right now. On this whole issue, but it is important to mention it. So until next time, this is your good friend John Doe in Tokyo checking out. The first time you've checked seen these videos, well please subscribe, you get stuff like this. Plus a slew of other nice surprises. I'm sure you enjoy, so till next time.